No, no, no. Thank you. Let me say that again. Let me start again. First of all, hello, Isabella. Second of, I mean, good afternoon. And thank you for Hi. pointing out that I was <laughs> muted the 85 yeah. times I just said hello to everybody else. Right. So hello, Isabella. Hello. So I'm starting again. Hello, Isabella. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Aaliyah. Hello. Oh, oh yes. And Cynthia, thank you for telling me that I was muted also. Right. Okay. You understand? I always I always have to thank anybody who tells me that I'm muted as though it's a problem because you know you can imagine in my family, people are more like oh you're unmuted could you get more muted please and I'm talking in real life like not in Zoom you know you can anyway uh, hello iPhone I mean no just kidding hello I know that is hello Arlene I mean um, hello um, wait can I do this wait is that can I is this weird can I do this. Wait, did I just do that? Okay, that's real. Okay, if Arlene, if you're paying, if I just change, that's really weird that I have the power to do that. I should not be able to change your names, people. Like that's like a God thing. Um, I just wanted to see if I could do that. But Arlene, if that's you, you can change it back or whatever. Sorry, okay. I'm just having fun. Okay, Crystal. Um, hello, Leslie. Hello, Crystal. Oh, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, hello, Crystal, hello. Leslie, okay, I think that's everybody know. And one other thing, I just, oh wait, is there someone else? Uh, oh yes, okay, well thank you, Arlene, okay. Um, also weird, stupid little point, I just learned from my, my nine-year-old nephew the other day indirectly, that you can move the squares around now. I guess you couldn't used to do that, but now, you know, you can move the squares around in your Zoom, which I don't know, I mean, I didn't know that. You can do that, that's cool, okay. Um, I think we're ready to go. Again, I think you guys are very on top of the homework. I'm very pleased. Like, I, um, and if you turned in, and it's still not too late, too late to turn in something, yada, yada, yada. If you did turn in something today, then I haven't gotten to it yet. But other than that, I think if you turned in anything at any time um, as of last night, then hopefully you've gotten it back. Um, and if not, you should let me know. Um, again, it's still never too late to, I wanna keep, it. it's never too late to do one of those game a turn assignments or to do many of them. If you feel like you still don't know what I'm talking about with that, if you like this whole game thing, it like he keeps talking about it, but it's going by me, you probably want to check in with me at some point because the whole game thing is many points that many people in the room are accumulating, but many people are like not. So even though it's totally extra credit, it's totally optional and all that, like it's starting to create a gap in you know like numbers between various people that's not what it's it's kind of meant to do that but it's kind of not so it's not too late to ever admit privately to me i don't get what's been going on with this whole thing can i start now the answer is yes you can um but okay why am i saying all that i'm saying all that because i because i think you guys are on top of homework and hopefully i'm on top of your the grading of your homework and the truth is that you could all have grades right now that would mean something but we do have to have an exam and a final exam. And I had initially said the exam was going to be something like today or something. I initially made this whole, and then we got rolling, which is great. We sort of got more momentum than I've often gotten in classes. And I hate exams as much as you do, maybe. So we kind of went past. So whatever promise I made at the beginning didn't happen. I'm certainly not going to just spring an exam on you right now out of nowhere, but we do have to have an exam. So here's the deal. I think it was supposed to be today or something like that. Here, here's my proposal. So we're about to talk about exam right now for anybody who's listening. We're about to talk about midterm right now. First thing is I apologize because I think it was supposed to be earlier than it's now gonna be. I am officially, first of all, saying this, this, cost, this conversation constitutes a postponement of some kind in midterm. And if that, you know, and I apologize, but this format of the midterm, the expectations, the way it's going to work is this is not changed. That is to say, once we nail down that we're having this midterm, then what first thing that happens is I owe you guys a practice exam and you work on that. Then the second thing that happens is I owe you some kind of solutions of some kind to that practice exam, maybe not to every single question, 
Um, but I owe you, I will have to, and maybe not right away. Like you might have a practice exam to think about for a little bit, but then I'm going to give you answers to it either in written solution form, most likely, or I might walk through some of those solutions in a video that I would post as an option. So first, so again, what I'm saying is exam is coming up. We're going to have an exam, but we don't have an exam until you get a practice exam from me and have some time to do it. Hold on, just letting people in just to remind you, you don't turn in that practice exam for a grade. It's entirely for you to, to make it clear what's on the exam and all that. And by the time we have the actual exam, you will have gotten some kind of solutions or whatever to that exam or a walkthrough on video. Let me also say something that we started doing last semester. It may or may not have been clear here to be as clear as I can be. Once I give you a practice exam, right? Like when I give you a practice exam, I don't instantaneously give you answers. Like you, you wanna work on it first. But once I give you answers or solutions, I'm saying right now, if there's anything on the practice exam, anything on the practice exam, which you haven't gotten yet, which I'm gonna give you, but if there's anything on the practice exam that you end up not getting answers to, that means it will appear exactly that way on the actual exam, right? Like I reserve that right, in other words. If I give you a practice exam, and we, I'm saying this clearly because it sort of became true last semester, but I don't think we like, I don't know if we made it as explicit or official as clear as I want to make it right now. I'm saying our, like our view of the contract of, is, and sorry, more people are coming in, so I'm probably gonna have to repeat this, but actually, let me just pause for a second. More people are coming in. Hold on one second. Okay, I mean, while people are talking, again, just for anybody who's coming in now, we are now about to talk about the midterm exam, which we do have to have, and we're gonna have. The first thing I'm saying about the midterm exam is, I'm going to give you a practice exam for it. Um, I will give you solutions to that practice exam to most of it. But if there's anything, but I won't give it right away, I, but I won't give the solutions until after a little bit of a delay so that you can work. But second of all, if there's anything on the practice exam, like, like say you get to, it's like the night before the actual exam, which we're going to figure out, but it's like the night before the ex actual exam, you're about to take the actual exam. You've been studying, like you're a good person. And you're like looking over your practice exam and you're like, okay, and I get how to do this. And I get out of that. And you look at your practice exam and you see there's one part of it. Hey, Yavaram never gave us a solution to this. Like question three, he never, like he didn't give us a document and he didn't post a video. There's no answer to this question right here. I thought Yavaram was gonna give us solutions to all this. It, for any piece of the practice exam, that remains unsolved, even until the night before the actual exam, what that tells you is that that exact question as is will be on the actual exam. In other words, if we don't give you the answer at all, it's because we're not even changing it a shred in the actual exam. It means you're literally going to be asked that. So any research, you, so therefore we're, we're expecting that you tried to find the answer on the web, that you tried to work it out or whatever, and that you worked together and all that. But we're not giving the exact answer because we're not even changing it for the actual exam. If that, okay, if you, anything that's on the practice that you don't have an explicit solution for, for the real thing, assume that means, oh, this is just an advanced copy of the exam then. Like, so now the exam has become even more take home in a sense, okay, just to, but other than that, you're gonna get a practice exam, you're gonna get solutions to it. You're gonna get the practice, assuming that we approve this in a minute, well, I'll tell you right now, here's what I'm proposing. We're about to vote, okay? I mean, I know we've done this before and then I like flaked and didn't act on it and I apologize, but, but if we're gonna have an exam, I want you to have some consent in the process. So what I'm about to propose that you're gonna, that I'm gonna walk away and you're gonna confirm or not, I propose, and I strongly propose because the other, well, I propose, I propose that your actual, and please listen to this. Of course, I'll write this all up once we approve it. Actually, I'm just gonna pause for a second. Can I just get a show of electronic? If you're hearing me right now, if you're understanding that we're about to say something concrete and important about the exam, if you're just with me right now paying attention, can you please like, um, yeah, thank you. Awesome, great, Hi. great, awesome. Hello. Thank you. I can hear awesome. you. Okay, get that's the good, message. great, thank you. That's good enough for me. All right, so we're all here. Okay, so here's my proposal for the exam. Awesome, oh, and even clap. Thank you, Miles. Thank you, Amanda, okay. So, and I know this is deja vu all over again, because I'm about to make a proposal that's going to sound like, didn't we go through this before? And like, whatever happened to that? Yeah, we went through this, and then I totally flaked out. That's what happened. So now I'm proposing. I'm proposing that, <laughs> thank you, Ingrid. Okay, so now I'm proposing 
that your actual exam will be due to me on uh, right before class on Wednesday, two weeks from today. That means Wednesday, uh, March um, uh, 24th, right? I'm proposing that your exam will be due, like their take home exam will be due before class Wednesday the 24th. So like we show up to class 24th and you've turned it in and then we're all together and we know, you know, blah, blah. That would mean if that's, that's what you're about to vote on. You're about to, that, and that's in deliberately right before spring break. It means like you get this done and then you go on spring break. That's the idea. But what it further means, if you approve this plan that the exam is due before class Wednesday, the 24th, that would mean that I would post the exam, the actual take home online exam. I would post it like the Thursday or the Friday before then right before the week, maybe Friday midnight at worst, but before the weekend, I would post it. You'd have the weekend to do it and to work with each other, yada, yada. Then you come into class Monday, having already seen it, like it's already posted, you're looking at it. And therefore Monday, even if we don't spend the whole time like reviewing, I mean, Monday, I therefore you come in with questions, even though the exam's already out there, right? I just wanna make this clear. I wanna post this exam so that on Monday, you can ask questions. Now I can reserve the right to say, well, I can't really answer that right now because you're, but say you ask a question that's like, this is ambiguous to me. And then I'm like, oh yeah, because there's a, yeah, that's badly phrased or there's an error there. Then right there, we can catch like, in other words, Monday, you bring in issues you have about the exam. If I have to say, I can't answer that, I will, but I can't imagine what I couldn't answer because I'm allowing you guys to work together anyway. So on Monday is a last chance basically for everybody to find any issues that there might be in your own head or maybe an issue in the exam itself that then you can correct right then, okay? So the idea that I'm proposing is that the exam is posted like Friday the 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 uh, 19th. Monday, you come to class, you have an opportunity to ask questions and, and I'll also be more clear to you. Like I'll always have a plan on Monday, but if somehow you guys ask good enough questions that keep me occupied in reviewing for 75 minutes because your questions are good enough and it shows that you already are paying enough attention to the then good for everybody. I'm willing, you know, I, I, I won't plan on reviewing the whole uh, the whole period, but I'll be happy to review the whole period as long as there are good enough, specific enough questions. Okay, I'm talking too much. So, so then that means I would post the exam the, the, the Thursday before, the Friday before or the 19th. And what that means, it, all of that means is that by tomorrow, by Friday of this week, or tomorrow or Friday of this week, I will have posted the practice exam so that all of next week you're dealing with the practice exam and you can bring in questions about the practice exam at any time, Monday or Wednesday. You know, now again, I'll decide how much time I'm spending on it. But, you know, if your questions are good enough, I won't need to go on to new material or anything. I'll be delighted. You, you get it. So I proposal is I post the practice exam this Friday. You are working on it through the weekend, through next week. Um, um, with questions. Oh yeah. And I, I see those questions, right? I'm going to pause for a second. And let me be even one last thing to say before we vote on this or anything. And I'll take questions before we vote on it, but also to be clear, like what's on this exam or whatever you might ask. Very fair. Well, the real answer is whatever's on the practice exam is on the exam, but the fast answer is what will be on this exam is material covered through homework three, nothing more than that. And not including the vector stuff. I, this may already be a question that's in the direct, I, like I'm not looking in the chat just yet. I'm about to, but someone might already be asking. It would be like with homework two, we, I, in my opinion, we've gone over now all of homework two, except we have not gone over that vector dot product cross product business. Therefore that dot product cross product business as important as it is. And I might hopefully start to get talking about it before we get these. That's not on the exam. Dots and cross products, not on the exam. The exam would cover everything through homework three except for that. So truthfully, it's not actually a lot of material. That's the good thing. Like this could be a kind of tight manageable exam the way we're but that's my proposal before we even vote on it or anything when we first look in the chat but i'm also going to walk away so you can talk about it or i can make sure it's clear let me look in the chat okay hold on. all right um oh sorry okay 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 hold on i'm just going to respond to something in the chat for a minute.
I'm just looking, I'm still trying to, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and sorry. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> love this. Yes, so, okay. So two good questions I just got in the chat. I'm gonna just try to flesh this out. So number one, what I'm, uh, um, I'm proposing that this Thursday I would give out the practice exam. You could put it like this in your minds if you want. It's like I post the, uh, not this Thursday, this Friday. This Friday I would post the practice exam and in theory then the practice exam you all could say would be due next Wednesday, right? Then, then two days later, Friday, I post the real exam and the real exam is due the following Wednesday. That is what I'm saying. The only thing to, to be clear before I say anything further is the practice exam, when I say, if I say the practice exam is due next Wednesday, d please understand that's in your head. Like I don't collect the practice exams. I mean, no one said this in the private chat, but I just want to be clear. The practice exam, which I take very seriously, like I just honestly don't feel like I can give you an exam. It's my responsibility to give you a practice exam before I give you an exam. That's just what I feel. But, but that but it's not your responsibility. To, and I think you'd be very silly to try to study for an exam without using the practice exam. Like it's just the obvious way, but you're doing it. But the practice exam is for you. You don't turn it into me. You don't get a grade on it. I never see it. It's just totally, you know, for you. Um, so if you were planning your own schedule, you'd want to have it done by next Wednesday because then, you know, then you'd be ready to go on to the next exam. But you, but, oh, the more important question though that I just got in direct message from the same person, the super important question is open universe. Yes, I am saying that this exam, when you, you're gonna get a practice, but even when you get the real thing, presumably a, a week from this Friday, that real thing is a take home open universe. I love that. Someone just used that word in the direct message. Yeah, open universe exam. Like literally you're allowed to go on the web. You're allowed to talk to your friends. You're allowed to talk to your aunt who's a genius physicist. You're allowed, you're allowed to, while you're taking the actual real exam, not, not, not only are you allowed to go on the web and stuff like that, but also you're not under time pressure or in test conditions as far as I'm concerned. You, I mean, I, I think I would recommend that you don't like take the exam on the beach, but, but when you're doing the actual exam, you can literally have your practice exam open in front of you. And you're not fooling me if you do or something like you can have your, op your practice exam open in front of you with my solutions while you do the actual exam. And that, that just goes to say, so even if you're not finished with the exam, the practice by next Wednesday, okay, fine. Like the one can bleed into the other. It's meant for that. <clears throat> so yeah, it's open universe. And, and really, you, you got to understand, the biggest part of that open universe is you are really allowed to talk to other people. You have to understand at this point that my, my, all of the, all these systems that we have are sort of designed just to try to desperately get you guys to do physics together. Like, that's what we want. So you're told, but again, just everybody should remember that when I then get these exams from you, and this is something, you know, I was very bad about grading last semester. I mean, to say the least. Okay, and there are definitely people in this room that are aware of that. And I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that with pride. Uh, it's a reality. I was terrible about grading last semester. I'm hopefully, hopefully better now. Um, but when I, but I, and I do intend to grade your exams to, you know, to, to look at them as seriously as I'm, I've been looking at your homeworks. And let me just say that the, that the rubber meets the road. When I do look at your exams, like you, I, you're, you're allowed to be writing things down that got informed by other people or by the web or by other documents, it the only catch is you're not allowed to write something down that you don't understand. You can get to the level of understanding of it any way you can. Like someone else can help you understand. I call that research. I call that me admitting that I'm not the only one in the world that can explain physics or me recognizing that I may be terrible at explaining physics for many of you. You get the understanding however you can, but by the time it goes from your fingers to your piece of paper, then it is understanding is the one deal, right and and the one thing you all have to know is that when i'm looking at things i can tell the difference i mean you will see that when we get to homework three like i know the minute there's like a little delta flying in your answers to homework three i know you got that from the web and i look very carefully to see whether you know what you're doing with it or not like it's like that right so anyway <laughs> open universe yes great question absolutely yes um all that said then let me oh 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 oh, oh i'm sorry 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 Okay, and then there's two more questions in the chat. 
Oh, so the public question is when would the practice exam answers be posted? Totally fair question. Okay, so realistically, um, realistically, the answers that I would post, I would try to have in your possession before. I mean, they might come right away. I mean, they might, but I, but I mean, it sort of depends on what doc, how I put together the document. But I would say that I would have the answers to the practice exam for you guys, or at least a good amount of them, uh, solutions by Monday. So that way, if there's questions in class, and I mean, that way, if there's questions, um, you can ask them in class. So I would, I would post the actual, the practice exam like this Friday and I would one way or another try to have solutions by Sunday night, let me say. Um, again, may, that would be most of them. Maybe one or two of them I wouldn't post a solution. I would say, you can rest assured, I'm not posting a solution on this because it's exactly this question will appear on your actual exam. But anything that I post, I'll try to post by Sunday night um, as a document that is. And then, um, you know, if I get really inspired, I, I don't want to make a promise and then break it, but like, it's possible that I'll just make a video where I walk through the solutions and that would save class time and stuff. And if I did that, if I did that, it would be, um, I would, I'd probably do it. Well, I would try to do that before the Wednesday. If I did that, if I do a walkthrough of the solutions, which again, I'm not promising, but if I, if I do just a document, you'll get it by Monday, by the time we have class. If I do a walkthrough, I, that could be as late as Wednesday. Like I could potentially do the walkthrough even after I've already posted the actual exam. I mean, the walkthrough takes more time and I sort of have to do it in my basement when my family's asleep. So like, I can't totally promise that. So if there's a walkthrough, I might do it at any time, even when you're already working on the exam, if you, although I try not to. But as far as documented solutions to your practice exam, I would say I would have them by Monday. I mean, that's a very fair question. Then there was another question. Oh, and then we go over, oh, and then, oh, thank you. Okay, now going over the practice, I mean, this is the thing, this was now a private question. The one, why I'm even saying that I might post a separate video where I walk through it, because I do want to, the one thing about the practice exam is if I give you a practice exam that's totally similar to the actual exam and the actual exam is like take home online and all that, um, and if I actually give you a document that has solutions to the practice, then then I have to admit that what I, then I don't want to, I, then to actually plan a whole class where I also walk through the whole thing. I mean, if I end up walking through it in class, going over it with you as an explicit class, well then certainly number one, I won't post an extra video. That, but number two, the, the honest thing I'm trying to say is this, I'm happy to spend all Monday reviewing and preparing for this exam. I am happy to spend all money going over the practice exam, as long as that's because people are asking me questions that make me do that. Basically, I mean, not to be a teacher about this, but I will spend all of Monday preparing and reviewing for the exam happily. Like I'll do not a drop of new material if it's because it seems like people are like studying and using the practice exam and like, and now we're pushing forward as a result. But if like nobody's looked at the practice exam by Monday, you know, whether it's because they're solution, if no one's looked by the exam, you know, Monday or something, or we, I won't blame anybody. I'll understand life is life, but then I don't want to spend all period because then it's just all abstract. Then it's just like another lecture that's not going to do anything for anybody. So my most honest answer is I'll go over that practice exam as long as there are specific questions prompting me to do so. And when I say specific, I mean like questions like, like yes or no questions or multiple choice questions for which all, I might even post a new portal. I might even post a new portal for awesome points of participation in a semi-review day like that. Like you want to be asking questions that really show that you've tried something and now you're stuck somewhere in the practice exam. Not question, right? You don't want to ask me things like, can you go over oscillation? Like in private, you can ask me that. I never want anybody to feel ashamed if they're just realizing that they've never understood oscillation to the, but you don't publicly in front of a whole class, I can't on Monday, start at, you know, like start teaching all over again, fresh, right? Okay, again, I'm taking, because you see what happens. I'll spend too long on like any one question. So uh, yes, I will go over it to the extent that there are specific questions. Other than that, I will try to um, just give you a document or post a video. Okay, oh, uh, wait, Sandy, I'm looking at the under Oh God, oh, thank you, I'm sorry. Yes, there are people trying to get in. I didn't even see that. Thank you, the person who just told me that, sorry. I mean, there are people in the waiting room, sorry. Okay. Um, but the, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. A number of you just told me in private, thank you for telling me in private that someone was waiting. I'm totally sorry. I think I got them now. Thank you. Um, 
Again, all of these, look, all these questions are totally valid, right? I mean, you're allowed to be concerned about grades, to put it mildly. Um, I, uh, so I'm, and I, but right, but again, just always remember, my philosophy is I could give, you could all have A's and it wouldn't bother me at all, as long as they were all deserved A's. And the weirdest thing now, again, is that just with the way you guys have been doing homework and the fact that they are, they have been graded, between the homeworks and the um, game things, you know, some of you are like already securing your A's and what you just want to do is not mess up the exam, but some of you are creating a cushion for yourself where you're really, you know, can take this exam as a learning experience without being too stressed about it, hopefully. Uh, similarly, there are those of you who like sort of only can take exams. There are those of you who want to just take this exam, show what you know, and not be bothered with all this other like daily class stuff. And that's fine too. Like there's a way to get an A in this class without ever doing any homework. And there's a way to get an A in this class without kicking butt on the exam. But there's not really a way to get an A without doing either, if you follow me. Okay, so that said, that said, that said, I'm gonna, I'm proposing to you, and if we agree on this, I'll put in the Google Classroom and I'll update, but I'm proposing to you that our exam be due two weeks from today. That means the exam be posted uh, a week from this Friday. That means the practice exam be posted this Friday. If I'm going to walk away for a sec, like two minutes, so you guys can talk. I, uh, I don't have your phones in. I'm going to walk away, just talk for a second, and make sure you understand what I'm proposing. And, and then I'm going to come back and sort of just, I'm going to, it's going to like be a yes or no vote. Like, and if it's no, then we'll, you know, I'll deal with it from there. But all right, I'm walking away. Do you guys remember? I am here. If you get the two. Oh, okay. So, oh, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. All right, okay, I am looking. To, I mean, do you, if you want private time to, or if you want to, you can't privately message each other, can you? Well, I guess you can in the background. Um, okay, cool. I do appreciate this feedback in here. So I see. I mean, I thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Ingrid. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia, again. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Aliyah. Um, thank you, Isabel. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, good. Yes, about the break. Yeah. And, Here's this, so and I, I'm not trying to rush or anything, but here's what I'm gonna say now. It's looking like pretty positive. I'm gonna say this is to be as clear as possible. Any one of you who has any issue with this, especially because it is a change, right? I mean, I originally said one thing and now it's another. If you have any issue at all with uh, this um, exam proposed, with the dates of this exam, put it in the private chat. There's no shame. If you have an issue, especially if this conversation is moving too fast for you, you don't feel like you know other people in the class, like you don't want to write, say in the private chat, you have an issue with this timing. And, and I'm telling you, not only is there no shame, either, uh, I mean, put it in if there's a problem, because at worst, what I might have, to, might do is say, okay, it's only one person who complained, but they have a legitimate problem. So we're going to keep this arrangement, but I'll make a private arrangement with that one person. Like I'm willing to do that. So I do want to hear if there's any issue with this. And, and you can, and, and you know, if it occurs to you in 10 minutes, like you suddenly find out that you have a chemistry exam, private message me, I mean, direct message me, okay? Because um, if that's not the case, I'm gonna say, I'm, well, I'm gonna say right now, until or unless I hear any objections, we're, we're saying this and I will put it in the classroom written when we're done. So we're saying that our exam is two weeks from today and Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, okay. Good question. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh that, that's a really good question too. Oh, that's a really good question. I just got in the direct chat. Um, I am saying, and this is something I am firm about. I, actually, I'm really glad. All right. Someone just asked, sorry, I'm going to read this. This is my new thing too. I'm not going to, my new thing is, I'm going to read, I'm not going to read the person's name. 
because obviously they did it privately for a reason. But I am going to read the question so you know what I'm, so you all know what I'm talking about. The question is, would it be due that Wednesday at 11:59 p.m. or before class? Even if I already said that's a good question, because one thing I am being firm about is the timing. Like I am actually saying before class, and there's a reason for that. Like so, a lot of things are due at midnight. I'm, I don't mind the midnight deadline for a lot of kind of things, but on this exam, on an exam. Like the fi your final exam will be due at midnight of whatever day, I can tell you that. But this exam will be due before class. And the reason for that is um, if it's due after class, there's no way we have class, right? Then we're gonna have two days of talking about the exam or and or it's just unfair. I can't expect you guys to focus on new material while you're sitting there stressing about an exam. Like it just puts everybody in conflict. It's just, it's, it, it's it, you know, it's a recipe for frustration. So the idea is you have to have the exam done before you come to class. And also just to be, since I'm so loose about the rest of it that it's like online and you can work together and anything. One thing is we do kind of, it's also just to force like that one aspect of exams, like your job that day is to finish your exam and then show up with the exam submitted. Like I see you there, I see your exam submitted and you've done your job. And at that point, then anybody else who doesn't have their exam, like, like, you know, <sighs> Um, it's not like homework. If you hand in your exam late, then that is, then you are asking for an advantage that other people are not having. And that is unfair. And I will be serious about that. Like, I'm not saying I won't accept it. I'm not like, I, you know, I'm not saying you get a zero if you're 10 minutes late, but if you're 10 minutes late with the exam, I do have to do something about it because other people weren't. And furthermore, there's a whole thing of like, I, I am deliberately saying class, it's due before class so that what you can't do is not you can't spend the class time like finishing your exam and not showing up to class. Like it would be blatantly obvious that you're doing that. And that's where we have to draw the line. So very fair question. And if it affects everybody's answer on what day they want this exam due, then I can understand that. But no, I am saying that exam would be due. Like we'd have all of Monday to talk about the exam if that's how you guys guide the discussion. But then Wednesday, the exam comes in and we move on to new material. Like that's the idea. Um, okay, but thank you. That's a really good question. Uh, so I'm, until or unless I hear something in the direct chat, I'm saying our exam is due Wednesday, March 24th at 305, 304. Could I just get a show of hands if you've, if you've heard and you understand that we're saying this? Can you please electronically raise your hand? Like if you get that we're officially saying that the exam, Great, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna wait a while on this one, make sure, great thing. I'm actually gonna say, thank you, Aaliyah, thank you, Rachel, thank you. And this doesn't mean, you, even if you have a problem, you can still put in the private chat, but I wanna make sure you hear that we're saying this. So keep your hands up. Thank you, Aaliyah, thank you, Rachel, thank you, Ingrid, thank you, Kaylee, thank you, Cynthia, thank you, Daniel Yavrebo, oh, thank you, Arlene, thank you, Melissa. And I'm gonna actually wait, I wanna see everybody's hands acknowledge, so keep them up if you can't, I, I mean, I, I, I really, I wanna make sure everybody acknowledges this, so like, 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 not to, thank you. So, like, Billy, thank you. So, Tania, Miles, Crystal, Amanda, like, Arlene, you all hear that we're saying the exam is two weeks from today. Yeah, like, I'm so fair. I can, you know, you can see exams. All right, I'm gonna. See. Brian, you're good. Melissa's good. Crystal, you're good. Exam is two weeks from today. And if you're not good, put a direct message in. Okay, as you could see, I mean, honestly, there are so many of you in this room that I know handle exams so much better than I do as a student or a professor. I just can't stand them. I can't stand them, um, but they are valuable. Um, okay, thank you. All right, so that's it. I'll put that in the Google Classroom when we have a moment. We're good with that. Uh, so now we can go on going over physics, I believe, right? Yeah, we're back to physics and I believe and in my mind, we finished going over homework two yesterday, except for the vectors. We'll get back to the vectors, but those vectors are not on the exam. So just put, you know, put that aside for the moment. Um, now we're going to go over homework three. Even if you didn't do it, you can still do it, but we're going to go over homework three now. And thank you very much. And you can put the hands down unless there's a question. Okay. So homework three. Yes, we're good. Okay. Here we go. Um, right. Okay. Oh yeah, all right, so here we go, homework three. Now, homework three, and you can, again, please stop me at any time, yada, yada, but homework three is meant to be practice exercising. Like, 
homework three, in my opinion, is kind of easier than homework two. Like homework two, you're getting used to all this. Once you get the idea, hopefully you see that homework three is like the direct application of the idea. Okay, so, um, and again, still do it if you haven't done it yet. Um, and if it seems like, if you're like, I wish I had done this before I did homework two, that just means you're getting it and that's good. So what's going on in homework three? Okay, we're given the differential equation, D squared capital D, over dt squared equals 100, negative 121 capital D. Capital D here is the dependent variable, right? We're, we're trying to get used to the idea here now that everything we learned about x, it doesn't have to be x. Everything we learned about a mass on a spring applies to anything in the universe that acts like a mass on a spring. That's what we're trying to say now. And lots of things can act like a mass on a spring, even if there's no spring or no mass, so anything can be a dependent variable. We're using, we're using D as a dependent variable here as in degrees Kelvin, okay. We're also, so we're told that this second order differential equation applies to D, this familiar second order differential equation. And we're told that the initial value of D is 300 Kelvin, okay. So then our question here, you know, is how much time until D equals 300 K again? And I'm just pointing out in parentheses here, the way the wording of the question is, it's really asking like, it, it, it says, what's the next time that the temperature, now, I'm sorry. So what we were told in this whole problem is that temperature is fluctuating according to this equation, right? Um, and and it, But the temperature starts at 300. We're just trying to emphasize here that the math that we're learning could be applied to any variable, any scientific measurable variable in the world, including say temperature. Um, so the question says the temperature started at 300 degrees. When's the next time it'll be 300 again, implying that somehow the temperature is cycling. And I'm like, oh yeah, I think the temperature is cycling because that differential equation is very familiar. That's the differential equation that describes things that cycle, that oscillate. So I guess the temperature is cycling and it's asking when's the next time the temperature will be 300. So it's really in effect asking how, what's the minimum amount of time I'd have to wait to see 300. Like I'll probably see 300 again and again and again, but what's the minimum time to wait Okay, so what I'm really being asked here is what's the period, right? I'm really being asked how much time does a cycle of this sort take? So I'm looking for period. Now period is the easy, right? That's all it's asking. It's really asking what's the period of this oscillator, of this weather oscillator. Now period is the easiest, I shouldn't, period is the most direct thing you can measure in the lab. Period is the most relatable identifier of an oscillator, the amount of time some cycle takes, whether it's temperature or position in the lab, period is the thing that we can observe the most directly, we can measure the most directly, we can like uh, conceive, oh, you know, how many seconds elapsed as the thing went, went like that. But it's the hardest to, inf but it's not the thing that pops directly out of the math. Period di pops directly out of the lab Angular frequency pops directly out of the math. The link between the two is standard frequency. This is just practice in what we were trying to say two days ago. So what I'm saying here is I'm being asked about period. I don't know the period, but I know that period is the reciprocal of standard frequency. Um, and standard frequency, I'm gonna say on the next page, standard frequency, so period, period, sorry. So period, period, what I want is the reciprocal of standard frequency. Standard frequency is angular frequency divided by two pi. You can memorize that if you want, but it really just makes sense. We're just saying there's two pi radians per cycle. Like what is a radian? A radian is a sixth of a cycle. Like if, there, I mean, really, if I were to summarize the whole exam in a way, like if there's one thing to know at this point in this class is what's a radian? A radian is a sixth of a cycle. That is what a approximately, a radian is a sixth of a cycle. Just like a right angle is a fourth of a cycle, a fourth of a circle. A radian is a sixth of a cycle. So if you know the number of radians per second, divide by six by two pi, and you got the number of cycles per second. Flip that, you've got the number of seconds per cycle. So that's what I'm going to do right now. The whole assumption though is uh, apparently I'm going to do that because 
angular frequency, this sort of obscure, like this radiance per second thing that's hard to relate to in the lab. That's like, why would anybody ever care about omega, like omega radiance per second? Because it pops directly out of the math. Because the one thing that we're trying to say over and over here, like all of this hard month long reverse engineering work that we're doing, like basically everything we've done for a month is every step is me saying like, there's nothing to memorize here. There's no procedure. We just have to like think about this and conjecture and test and all that. And many of us in the room might be like, please, can we just have like, please, I thought this was a science class. Yeah, around. can you please just like give us an equation to plug into or give us a procedure to follow? Like, I thought that's what science was supposed to be. Well, secretly, I don't think science is that way, but actually all the work that we've been doing is to give us something like that. Those of you who just want a direct procedure, here it is. Like the result of all of that work that we've been doing is that from now on, we're going to say to ourselves, if we really get this, if we get that we have solved the differential equation, then what that means to us is from now on, whenever we see a differential equation of this form, whenever we see this exact differential equation, whatever the dependent variable is, like I'm calling Z, but Z could stand for D or X or Y, if we see this second order differential equation, what we're allowed to memorize now, what we're allowed to just say now because of all of our hard work is then automatically, if we see this, even if we don't know what Z refers to or we don't feel comfortable at Z, we know that Z is oscillating harmonically. That means at a steady rate in time and a steady rate, which is necessarily the square root of whatever is here. Now, let me say this again for the 90 millionth time, the 90 million, because it's that important. Like old teacher question, like, why does he say this 90 million times? The reason is because I actually said it 170 million times and you missed 60 of them, like not really. But like, I'm not saying this because I think anybody's not listening. I'm not saying this because I think anybody missed it. I'm saying, because it's that important that this omega squared thing here just stands for any constant at all, right? It's just the constant of proportionality. It didn't have to be called omega squared. It could be called C for constant of proportionality. It could be called anything. But what we're saying that all of our work has led to is if we ever see a differential equation that has a constant right here like that, then we, and if all the rest of it is correct, then we, have an, then we have an oscillator whose angular frequency is the square root of that constant. We call it omega squared because we're playing Monday morning quarterback. Like we call it, that means hindsight. We're calling it omega squared only because we're saying whatever it is, the square root of it is the angular frequency of this oscillator. It's the rate of the oscillator in radians because because that's what the math is giving us, right? So I'm literally saying, I mean, it is a memorizer at this point. Once you see everything, I'm literally saying, oh, if in this case, if we were told that the difference, that the constant of proportionality was 121, if we were given this, we know right away that we have an oscillator that is oscillating at this frequency. Like it's that simple. I'm talking so much because we wouldn't be allowed to believe this otherwise. But once you get what I'm saying, yes, it's that simple. Just the square root of whatever freaking number Whatever the constant is in that thing, the square root of it is our rate of oscillation. That's simple. But our rate of oscillation measured in math units, units that come straight out of the geometry of a circle, not necessarily units that we can relate to in the lab. But what we get, so in other words, 11 is the angular frequency. I mean, I'm just kidding, but yeah, I mean, you could stop me. But I'm saying if 121 was the constant of proportionality, then 11 is the square root of that, is the omega, is the angular frequency, thus, okay, so here we are. So thus omega is 11 radians per second, just because um, there, so, so we're doing 11 radians every second. That means temperature is, is fluctuating at 11 radians. What does it mean for temperature to, you know, progress 11 radians every second? It means you gotta remember that six radians is a cycle. That's all, right? Six radians is a cycle. Six, where did he get six? Two pi, I'm approximating. So six radians is a cycle, then 11 radians per second means I'm doing a little bit less than two cycles per second, right? That's what this is saying here. Again, you can memorize this, but it's just, it's logical. It's saying if you're doing 11 radians per second, that means that you're doing about 1.75 cycles per second, what we call 1.75 Hertz. A hertz is a cycle per second. So we're literally saying the temperature 
like is yeah, is doing almost two full there and back cycles through all temperature numbers um, every second. And then therefore we're flipping that. We're saying, oh, if it's doing one point, if it's doing almost two cycles per second, then it takes a little bit more than two seconds. Uh, sorry, if it's doing um, almost two cycles per second, then it takes a little bit more than a half of a second, one over two, to do a cycle. If I'm doing two laps around the track, then that means it, I do, if I do, if I do two laps around the track every minute, that means it takes me a half a minute to do one lap. That's what we're saying, right? So T, so the answer to the first question, and of course, a lot of people got this right, and some people still have to do it, but the answer is 0.7, is 0.571 seconds. That's the answer. That's the, literally the period of this oscillator. That's the amount of time it'll take for the oscillator to return for the first instance to its original amplitude position. That is the answer. I think this is the way to get it. I think just to be as blunt or honest as possible, like, but like that's the answer to one. And I'll take any questions about that in a second. But before I move on to question two, I know this looks well, yeah, please copy this down. Yeah. Just one quick thing to point out. Our differential equation is the one on top. I'm saying the solution is D equals D naught cos uh, omega T. Now, if you've really been paying attention to, and, and to this, to like, if, if you paid attention to the stuff we said about in the middle of homework two, when we were talking about like, what about cosine omega T plus 3.5? And we got into this whole thing of like, couldn't there be an extra term called phi, called a phase constant? Like, doesn't that also work as a solution? So what if there is that term, right? Like, what if there's this extra term phi? Because if you, because we do have to start caring about phi. We, like in the next subunit, we're really gonna care a lot about phi. So you might say, well, wait, are we now, don't we have to worry about this extra, this phase constant term? And sure, technically there is that phase constant term but sometimes it equals zero and sometimes it doesn't. Here in this case, first of all, we don't have any reason to set phi as anything other than zero. We always want things to be as simple as possible. If we can get away with calling phi zero, we're going to, it's just like, sorry. I just want to make very clear, like, you know, in physics, you always have to choose your coordinate system. You have to say, well, where is the origin? Like, from what perspective am I looking at the situation? We always want our choice to make things as simple as possible, as simple as possible. No simpler, but as simple as possible. 
So just like with x equals one half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught, whenever we can, we make x naught zero. Whenever we can't, in other words, x naught supposed to be where the object started, at what spot? Well, that means compared to zero. So when possible, we just call wherever the object started, we just call that zero. And therefore we x naught equals zero. We don't have to worry about it. Same thing here. Whenever possible, if we just have an oscillator and we're just timing it, we don't have any other information, we're going to assume we started timing it at the most convenient, easy place to start timing, i.e. when it's at uh, the amplitude position. If you don't have reason to make phi something other than zero, we don't, right? So phi is zero in these cases, in this homework. But let me also say, even if phi were not zero, omega is still 11. Oh, excuse me. Actually, let me run. No matter what phi equals, omega is still square root of 121. And therefore, our answer to this whole question is going to be um, uh, 0.571 seconds, no matter what. So, why am I saying all this? Like, well, partly again, because we're about to get into phi more. So I have to make it clear when phi matters and when it doesn't, when that phase comes. But also just to be at, uh, Um, just to be obnoxious for one second, for anybody who did homework, like I say omega t plus phi, but then I'm saying phi equals zero. So you don't have to worry about this for this homework. For this homework, really, in other words, all you need to do for this homework, all you need to know is this. And I've never used, and I've in this class never used this symbol yet. I'm going to use it in a big way for something else soon in this class. It's going to be used for that, but I've never used it in this context for this. So just so you know, like anybody who in the homework like had stuff, had some answers with this in it stuff, like I just want to make it clear, nothing's wrong with that. You didn't cheat, like, and you get full credit and it's all okay. But it it does, if you have a bunch of these things flying around in your homework, and obviously it didn't it come from me, it came from the internet, that's fine. But you just got to know that I know that, right? So then be really careful when you're doing that, make sure you get it. Try to link up, like first look in your class notes is basically what I'm saying. Just try to see whether we said something about this or not before. I Look, the internet can be a lot more clear than I am, but you wanna sync, you wanna at least from class know what we're trying to do. And then you use the internet to figure that out but then relate it back to class. So in other words, if you figure things out from the internet and the, the internet was using this symbol, it's important to then understand that in this class, we use a different symbol for that. So like link back somehow and, and just know in your mind, things are going to get confusing if you don't, because we're going to use that symbol for something else, if I'm making any sense. Okay. Um, but all right. Um, that said, I think the answer to question one is so one T. Oh, and last thing, speaking of the internet and Chegg and all of this, someone asked in the other class, I'll say this very quickly. You might notice I did a kind of cheesy thing. Maybe I did this last semester. I did a kind of cheesy thing, which is, because since I had your exam on my mind, all that somewhere in your um, in the Google stream in like materials or something, I did post a link to a book of mine that does have to do with the final exam. Let me just be, it was a little bit, as I say, it's a little bit of an awkward thing for me to do. So let me try to be as clear as possible. 
The link that I put in that has to do with the, that's called backfields. First of all, that's about the final exam. It will not help you at all for the midterm. It'll only annoy you for the midterm. It has nothing to do with the midterm. I just have, okay. Number one, it's only about the final. Number two, the reason I put that resource there called backfields, and it says like for what it's worth or something, it is for the final. It is on the one hand, the most useful possible thing I could give you for the final, which is that what it is, what I put there, I'm sorry, this is a, but I got a question about this and it, before I forget, the, the link to backfields that I put in the Google stream, what that is, is a collection of like three recent, um, complete and highly representative and hard final exams from this class, like from John Jay, Physics 204. It's got like three full old final exams plus full worked out solutions and explanations for at least two of them. And then like some general explanations as well. But basically it's just a test prep book, literally for our final, just, you know, it's like a review packet. It just happens to be three tests rather than one. So all compiled and stuff to level the playing field to make it easier. Um, but it happens to be like, I put it on Amazon and everything be basically so I can get revenge on Chegg. I mean, to tell you that, but it's totally optional. Okay, totally optional. I am not asking you to spend money on this class. I'm certainly not asking you to spend money that goes to me in the class or whatever, but it turned out over years and years, the best way I could prepare you, instead of just giving you a practice exam, the best way I could prepare you is to give you a bunch of practice exams, plus the MSRC used to give them out anyway, plus we like you to have past back, back exams, but some of you have older siblings or something, like some of you have more access to back materials than others. So then it becomes a competition and a race and unfair, like who has the, so just to, and basically when I started really hating Chegg, it just occurred to me one year that like, all right, if Chegg makes all this money, like publishing bad answers to my questions, I might as well make, a, I might as well take some of his money, take some business away from him and publish the correct answers to my questions and publish them all so that nobody has an advantage over anybody else you could just get. But it is totally optional. I'm not, and if you actually want that, so it's on Amazon, there's an ebook version, it's like $3 and there's like a paperback, it's like $9. It's meant as a test prep book and it does, and it, believe me, it's as cheap, it's only to cover costs, the money. It's as though, it's just from the old days when I used to make big Xeroxes and, and then hand them out instead of that. But if any of you wants that thing, but in any way the money is a barrier, just talk to me and I'll get it for you. Like, it's not meant to be a money-making thing. Um, uh, also, I could probably just find the PDFs. It's just a big pain in the butt. So that's what that is. That thing in the stream is for the final exam, not the midterm. It is not mandatory at all. It's just plausibly helpful. And if you think it's helpful at all, but the money's a problem, tell me, blah, blah, blah. That's what that is. Okay, that said, I'm gonna go on with this homework. I mean, feel free to ask any questions, but someone asked me about that in the other class. So, okay. So the answer to the first question is T equals 0. 0.571 seconds. Um, the answer to the second question then. Oh yeah. All right, now, now. <laughs> I've talked a lot for a small change, but that, <laughs> but honestly, that first question, which once you see it, all we're doing, it's what everybody wants, right? It's, it really is like a plug and play or a drag and drop. I mean, it's like you write the differential equation, whatever the constant is, you take the square root, you're done. I mean, that's basically what the, now the weird thing is that the rest of this is easy compared to that. Once we've gotten that, now we really are plugging and chugging. Now we're, we're seeing what the equation of motion means. So like in question two, when it says, well, I'll go to the next page. Well, actually here. Yeah, all right, sorry. I mean, here it, here it is, the next one. Um, yeah, here's the next one written out. Uh, so what's given now is the same differential equation, same initial condition. Um, but now we're saying, now let's wait 200 seconds. What will the temperature be at the 200 second mark? And this Please understand this question number two, like um, this that we're asking right now, this really is the physics question, right? Like at any given, it, none of this means anything until we can always bring it, unless we can always bring it back to, okay, you name the time and I'll name the temperature. Usually it's you name the time and I'll name the position, but whatever it is in physics, in the end, you name the independent variable and I name the dependent variable. That's my job as a physicist. So if I can't bring it back to that, I, all of it, the rest is nonsense. 
So that's what we're doing. And that's why, of course, we like a plugin. Like I, you are naming T, I have to name D. So I want a D of T function that I can just plug in. That's where the work came in in part one and all the rest. Okay, so now I'm just plugging in. Fine, I'm looking for D when T equals 200. So I'm plugging in 200 for the T. I still have that 11 that I've already figured out. 300 is still the initial value. And, and now you watch the unit. Oh, and now I get an answer. The answer here, turn on the side, sorry. The answer I get is approximately 190 degrees Kelvin. It's like 189 or something, rounding the three digits I could ask. It's the answer is 190. If you got an answer like 230 or something like that, if you got some other answer, well, first of all, if you got any answer that's more than 300, you're definitely doing something wrong, right? Like, I mean, no offense, but like one spot check on why I like my answer of 190 is, at any moment I plug in, I don't care if I plug in 20 seconds later, 59,000 seconds later, if this thing is, I believe this thing is an oscillator just because the differential equation told me so. I believe the, so the temperature is going like this, or you know, like this, the temperature is going like that. It's never going to get higher than 300 according to this differential equation. So 190 is reasonable, but if you got like 230 or something, the mistake you're making is that your calculator is not in radian mode. Your calculator must be in radian mode for this to work. Like we are now assuming radians. We're dividing the circle into six parts, each one of which is called a radian. We are not dividing the circle into 360 parts and calling each one a degree. Could we do that if we want to? Sure, we could, but we then we'd have to do it. Somewhere in here, we'd have to have a conversion factor. We'd have to divide, like the thing about radians is it's just directly what happens because the circumference of any circle is two pi times its radius. So those just come out of, so there's no degrees here anymore. This is radians. Your calculator must be in radian mode. That's how you take the cosine of 2200 and you'll get, and so you, you know, 11 is radians per second. It multiplies by 200 seconds. The seconds cancel, you're in radians. And it's That's my answer, 190. I'm moving on. I'm a little nervous, but it's 407. I'm gonna pause, right. good, we're good. Can I just, what? Okay, I'm gonna go on, I think. I'm gonna go on. Wait, just have to make sure. Are we, or can I just get, I know I hate to do this. Can I just get like, are we good to go on? Are we cool? Uh, could I just get like hands or something or? Uh, uh, oh, that's it. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Rachel's the only one. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Billy. All right, all right I'm gonna go on. All right, thank you, Isabella. All right, I'm gonna go. I, I know, I hate, I know. I, everybody hates everybody. I know. No, everybody loves everybody. I get it confused. All right, we're gonna go on uh, to three. Oh yeah, all right. Now here we are in three. And again, and you know, well, anyway, here we are in three. It's asking what in what units is the 121 measured in? 121 is not a special number. The point is that it was the constant or proportionality in our differential equation. And 121 is what we call omega squared, right? Again, Monday morning quarter, we're just calling it that because we know that this, the square root of it is what turns out to be omega. And we know that because we've already done the math. So the units for omega squared are radian squared per second squared. Truth is, a lot of you got this wrong on the homework. I mean, just as a reason to pay attention now. The answer to the, the most direct answer, I think, is radian squared over second squared. However, there are some other answers I'll accept. I, I do think a lot of people got this wrong, but not, but this isn't the, but the, the, mo the mo most obvious correct answer, I think, is radian squared divided by second squared. But then when I want to, there's a subtlety here that will become important. Uh, if you're beginning to understand radians with me, and I hope you are, again, remember that a, an angle is just a fraction of a circle. And that means literally fraction, like pure ratio, like a right angle is like a fourth of a circle, not one quarter meters of a circle, like a fourth of a circle, of a what? Of a circle. Is a circle a standard unit of science? No, like a circle could be of any size, any shape. So, a radian is a fourth of a circle. That just means it's a fourth. It, a radian is a meters of arc length divided by meters of radius. So the meters cancel and I have to, as much as I want everybody to understand what a radian is, one of the subtleties about radians is that whatever radian is, is not actually a thing. Understanding a radian is not quite like understanding a meter because a meter is a standard unit of measurement. A radian is not. A radian is the standard, but it's just a word that we write down to track these dimensionless, portions of circles. Therefore, therefore, to say radian squared over second squared, it's also legitimate to just say 
over seconds squared. Like you can literally, if you, this would also be a correct answer. In other words, the units of omega squared, I'm saying, it is correct to say that the units are one over seconds squared because strictly speaking, a radian is not a unit, even for that matter, okay? Um, or you could say seconds to the negative two. It's just, that's very, very awkward and clunky. Like, you know, the units are per second squared. Like, and that's why reinvent things like called Hertz and stuff like that, because it's just so awkward. But I would accept either of those answers. But why am I, but I wouldn't accept, I think it's uncool to write radians. Well, first of all, I definitely think radians per second is wrong. We're talking about omega squared here, not omega. Second of all, I think it'd be inconsistent and weird to just call it radians per second squared. Like, I don't think anybody did that, but it's like not an acceleration. It would be weird to do that. So you can either keep the radians or get rid of them. But what I really want, why I'm really asking this question, even if you got it right and you think the answer is obvious, what I really want everybody to notice is there's no temperature units in this answer. Omega, like what do we have here? We have a, a system that is, uh, sorry, we have a weather system that is oscillating in temperature. We're trying to see that this is like a mass on a spring, that all the behavior and all the predictions and all the numbers are like anything we can visualize about a mass going back and forth on a spring. What we are trying to say here as physicists is once we get all of that, we could apply it to even the idea of temperature acting springy, right? We're saying that temperature here is going up and down and acting like a mass on a spring. Um, and it's doing so at some very specific rate, the rate of 11. But the rate is not number of degrees per unit second or something. It's really important to see that the rate that we met, like the one number we know from the differential equation, the one number sitting there describing this temperature system is a number that has nothing to do with temperature. That's what I'm trying to say. Understand that no matter what you're, in other words, Yeah, I'm trying to say here that answers I wouldn't accept for omega squared, like I won't, I would not, radian per second is wrong for omega squared, but Kelvin's squared is wrong. Like omega has nothing to do with Kelvin's, even though this whole thing has everything to do with Kelvin's, right? And omega is not even a function of Kelvin's, I'm saying right here. I'm saying that the units of 121 have nothing to, I'm saying that the units of omega have nothing to do with the units of the dependent variable. That's an important observation because it's another way of saying something I'm trying to drum in that I cannot say enough. I'm, and it's this page here. And please, do, I'll try to, you know, I know it's weird that, but please do copy this down. Even if you get it, I'm saying that, that I'll read it out loud, that, that the units of angular frequency have nothing to do with the units of the dependent variable, right? The units of omega have nothing to do with the units of D. That's what I'm trying to say here. Omega is like in radians per second. So the fact that the omega units had nothing to do with the D units, or that put another way that the omega units are going to be radians per second, no matter what system we're talking about, that constant is always going to be, it, that constant of proportionality in the differential equation is always going to be a thing about radians, no matter what everything else is about. What that's telling me, that's further evidence or further emphasizing of what we mean by harmonic oscillation. Oscillation is any kind of back and forth. Anything can oscillate. Like my pencil right now is oscillating, or my whatever, this pointer is oscillating. That does not mean it's oscillating harmonically. To oscillate harmonically means a steadily, like a steady rate of oscillation, but even deeper than that. What I'm trying to say from every angle I can is that to oscillate harmonically, which is what we're studying right now in physics, to oscillate harmonically, harmonically means not only that your oscillation is steady in time, but that it's steadiness, it, not only is the rate constant, but that the constant rate itself does not in any way come from or get changed by or affected by how the system is set up. The rate at which degrees of temperature here are fluctuating has nothing to do with what temperature we started at. That, right, or the rate at which a mass on a spring goes back and forth has nothing to do with how far out you hold the mass initially. That is a very deep point. I can't say it enough. Like, again, a pendulum, you start the pendulum from here and it's like tick tock, tick tock, one every second, one. But if you started away over here, evidently it's still 
tick tock, tick tock, one every second. Even if the distances are longer, the times are the same because in longer distances, we get more potential energy, therefore on average, more kinetic energy, therefore faster. And the fasterness works out perfectly to compensate for the more distance. So we get a rate in time that has nothing to do with setup, with distance. It's just the rate in time has to do with the ingredients of the oscillating system, not the configuration of the system. That is truly what we mean by harmonic. I cannot, like it's, it's why clocks are clocks, that clocks keep time regardless of what's happening in space, right? So that's what we're saying. So, and one way of seeing that is note that the units of 121 have nothing to do with temperature. They only have to do with rate. So frequency is independent of amplitude. Like, please write that. In fact, while I turn the page, like harmonic means frequency independent of amplitude. Huge point. I'm going to move on, but that's, but that's okay. But that's the, that's the purpose of question three anyway. Now we do go question four. Okay. And question four is where we'll end. We have four minutes. Question four is a good place to end today. Question four is now just trying to, again, we are physicists as physicists, we're trying to go back and forth between our particular examples that we care about in space and time, like actual physical masses on springs, right? We're trying to, we, we care about some specific mass, sorry, we care about some specific object in some specific space and specific time because we're physicists. In order to analyze this specific object, like here, a mass on a spring, we start using math. The math doesn't care what the physical objects are. So by the time we're done with the math and we solve our problem with our physical object, we're like, oh my God, we just discovered something about all these other physical objects because whatever math we just did, if it's right, it's right whenever it's right, right? So what we're saying here is by studying a mass on a spring, we are then teaching ourselves about anything in the world that acts like a mass on a spring, anything that's springy, even if it's a weather system, as long as it, we believe it sort of acts like a mass on a spring, then what we're kind of saying is that everything we know about masses on springs, we can carry over. So we're saying here, let's picture this weather system like as a big mass on a spring. If we wanted to ask ourselves, how stiff is that spring? Like how, it's just another way of saying how quickly does this whole system rebound, right? So if we're given the mass, we can find the K effective, the effective stiff, stiffness of the effective metaphoric spring that is, you know, that we're, that is governing this um, oscillation. In other words, anything that is springy can be understood as though it were a spring. And how do we do that? Well, we realize, and so this is how we're going back to the X's rather than Z's, like, like we know omega must be square root of K over, I mean, I mean, if we're now calling it a spring, we're saying F equals negative KX. So, the, so we're now saying, I think you know, well, yeah. So we're saying omega must equal square root of k over m. Therefore, so omega squared is k over m. So k is m omega squared. So it's a plug and chug. I mean, here it is. And the what, but I know we have only two minutes left. Like the answer that you do get, like this is the answer. And all of you who got this got it right. Like totally is the answer. Just a quick thing though about units, right? And this is what I was kind of saying a second. And this is where we're going to end. It's 4 and 19. Um, like I'm just multiplying m times omega squared, right? And omega squared, we said, is in radian squared per second squared. Okay, so I have kilograms times radian squared per second squared. But now is where I have to be sort of careful. Like if I want to check that my units are okay, radian are, radians are not a strict unit. They're dimensionless. So I can just drop them if I want. Like if it makes it easier for me, I can. As long, so, um, so I have kilograms over second squared. Why is that the units of k? Like what is, well, remember k in the first place came from like F equals negative KX. K in the first place is something that's usually measured in Newtons per meter. It's force per, it's force divided by displacement. This is a lot, so K should be Newtons per meter. But I have written here, I'll just say quickly, but a Newton, a unit of force is a unit of mass times acceleration. A Newton is one kilogram times one meter per second squared. So what we have here are kilograms times meter per second squared all over meters. I'm saying this quickly, but there it is on the sheet. So the meters cancel. And what I'm trying to say is, oh yes, Newtons per meter. Oh yes, that's the same thing as kilogram per second squared. So either way, uh, it seems like I'm being consistent. My number for K does make sense. And I get 9.68 times 10 to the fourth Newtons per meter. Did I copy that right? Yeah. And that's the answer. And that's, um, and we won't do, whoops, sorry. And the, I'll leave the rest of the questions for next time or whatever, that's it. Okay.
So I'm done. Uh, I appreciate everybody's everything. Uh, I'll I'll hang out for any questions that there might be. But other than that, if you say goodbye, I'll say goodbye. And great and quark bless America. So, so goodbye. And, but I'm here for questions. For the movies. Or for copying that. Yeah, I can also turn back the pages if you want, et cetera. But take your time. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Professor. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. Has the first goodbye today. I don't know where. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. And goodbye. I don't know where all the other goodbyes went, but yes, thank you, Melissa. Good stuff. Yeah, but you guys are okay. Our Lady, Amanda, Ingrid, Brian, you guys. Well, thank you. Goodbye. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it, Amanda. Um, and thank you, Our Lady. Thank with the question mark. And uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. All right. Cool. So we're good. All right. Thank you.